Hey Queen, are you wondering how to overcome objections in your sales process? Mike Tyson has a quote and he says, everyone has a plan until they get hit in the face. And that's oftentimes how I think we view sales objections. It's like, oh, I'm so excited about working with this prospective buyer. I've got the language nailed down. I have the presentation. And then the buyer presents an objection and it's like, Oh, where do I go from here? So if you stay until the end of this video, I'm actually going to tell you how objections are a gift in the sales process and how to overcome them. First and foremost, let's talk about what a sales objection is. A sales objection is basically your prospective buyer articulating why they won't or can't buy your service. Oftentimes an objection is just a communication of what's confusing for them or what do they have issues with or what doesn't resonate with them. Let me tell you, the worst objection to get is silence. The last thing you want is to present your offering to a potential buyer for them to not give you any feedback and then all of a sudden just to ghost you. And then you're like, I don't even know what happened. And a sales objection, however, when a prospective buyer articulates an objection to you, it is a gift from the marketplace. We as sales professionals or business leaders, we're really in an experiment. Business is like one big experiment. We have an offering for the marketplace and we're hoping that the marketplace views our offering as something that helps them with their desired transformation or we, help that, we hope that what we're offering is something that they will identify as a need. But when the market gives you feedback in the form of an objection, it's a gift because it tells you, hmm, maybe the way that I'm talking about my solution is a problem and it's not resonating. Maybe what I'm offering is actually a problem or maybe the way I'm communicating this is confusing and I need to do a better job of making sure that I position what I offer as something that will alleviate the problem of my buyer. So see it as a gift. I can't tell you how many times <laughs> a buyer has presented an objection and that objection really just has been an invitation to a candid conversation where they can really share what they're looking for, for what they're not understanding. And then it presents an opportunity for me to shift how I'm talking about my solution so that we can make it a win-win. An objection does not mean the business is lost. An objection also doesn't mean to insult your buyer or try to like talk over them. So when we talk about overcoming an objection, it's not about like having some snazzy script of like, ooh, when I get objections, I say, but ma'am, and I have these three steps that I follow and I say them very buttoned up and somehow when I follow these three steps, it all of a sudden makes them wanna buy my offering. No, that's not, <laughs> that's not how it happens. An objection now lets you know, oh, something's not landing, let me better understand. And so when you hear an objection, the first thing that you should do is hold space for the objection. You do not want to disagree with your buyer, right? So if your buyer says, oh my gosh, this happens. <laughs> this happens with when I get my nails done. So I've been getting my nails done from the same person for far too long because she now gets away with the worst way of overcoming my objections. Because now when I tell her, oh, I don't like that shape, she disagrees with me. She's like, yes, you do. That shape looks wonderful on your nails. And I'm like, no, it doesn't. And so she doesn't agree with me. She just tells me, but she's been working with me for so long. I just let her do it. And sometimes days later, I'm like, oh, I do like this shape. Sometimes I leave the salon. And I'm like, why in the hell didn't I just hold my ground and tell her to like change the shape of my nails or take that color off because I didn't like it. Please don't be <laughs> the person who does my nails. But what you wanna do is hold space. You don't wanna argue with your buyer. That can be insulting. And when we think about the sales process, it's all about a relationship. And so if you think about the relationship that you have with the significant other, it's, okay, this is how you feel. Let me seek to understand. Let me hold space for that viewpoint and let me honor that perspective. That's the same thing you wanna do with an objection. So for instance, if you present your solution and your buyer says, that won't work for us, we're not interested. Instead of me seeing that as like a period at the end of a statement, I'm going to seek to understand, you know, John, thank you for your feedback. You know, 
Based off of what I heard before, I thought this might be a great fit, but clearly I may have missed the mark. Can you share more with me of why you think that this won't work for your culture and your organization? And so then John now is going to reveal something to me and he's going to say, well, that's not going to work because this stakeholder over here wants a shorter engagement that's six months and this engagement is 18 months and they're not going to look for that. Well, guess what? That's an objection I can overcome, right? So instead of me thinking that that's a final point and that we're not going to be able to work together, now because I've sought to understand, John has revealed critical information to me that now presents an opportunity for me to discern, can I customize what I'm doing to fit what he's looking for, right? So, oh, John, good to know. I didn't realize that the timeliness of the solution was something that was critical to our partnership. Absolutely, there are ways that we can tailor this to fit in six months. Or, you know, sometimes they might present something that really is a deal breaker. And if you're not able to accommodate them, at least you understand what that objection is. And if you hear that objection over and over and over and all your buyers are saying, hey, the feedback is we want this in this shorter container, then that allows you the information and data as a professional to discern, do we need to change the way that we do business? This makes me think of like the overused analogy of Blockbuster, right? The Blockbuster versus Netflix and Blockbuster not seeing the writing on the walls that their business model was becoming antiquated and thus was then disrupted by a provider like a Netflix. Your sales process is what keeps your ear to the ground. Your sales process and those conversations and those objections are the very thing that allow you to shift and evolve to the needs of your buyer like a Netflix. So see them as a gift, see them as critical data points that allow you the opportunity to understand more of what your market needs. So we talked about one, when you get an objection, holding space for the viewpoint, not arguing with them, but you don't have to agree per se, but you can just be curious and want to learn more and ask them to share more. And then you wanna make sure that you understand, you repeat for comprehension. So John, what I'm hearing is you're saying that 18 months is too long because you guys really need six months to institute this change. So if I were to find a solution that was six months or more, would that align more with what you're looking for? Yes, awesome, then let's continue the conversation, right? So that's an example of how you overcome a sales objection. Now, if you're listening to this and you're like, Liz, this is great news, but I am still terrified <laughs> of objections. Let me give you a forward thinking approach to objections. Before you present your solution to buyers, you have the opportunity to really think about what are the objections that might come up? and plan for them, right? So in the discovery process, try to gather as much information as possible to mitigate the risks of objections down the line. Here's some best practices for that. One, make sure you find out everyone that's involved in the buying decision or who's involved in instituting the change that you are um, delivering as a service provider. Try to engage all of those stakeholders and all of those champions so that you can understand all of the perspectives that might be voiced in a buying decision. Two, what have they tried before? The last thing that you wanna do is present a solution and they're like, yeah, that's great, but we already tried that and that didn't work out. So make sure you understand what have they tried before. Do they have an existing budget, right? And just because they have a budget doesn't mean what you propose has to fit in their budget. That's a whole nother video. I'll tell you about that later. But you at least wanna know, are there some hard costs or strict budgets that I need to be cognizant of as I'm shaping out my solution and proposing an offering? You wanna think about timeliness, right? So. Do they have initiatives and timelines that they're looking to achieve this outcome? Make sure you ask those questions during the discovery process so that you understand the timeliness. Is there a trigger? So is there a triggering event or something unique that's happened that's created this need for your solution right now? Make sure you understand that trigger. And the status quo, make sure you ask the question so you can understand what does business as usual look like? And what are the emotional and financial implications of business as usual? If you do a thorough comprehensive job during the discovery process, by the time you get to proposal, hopefully you will have gathered enough information to be even more effective in delivering your proposal or your solution, which then will mitigate just how many objections you get. But when you do get an objection, don't treat it like a boxing match. It's all good. 
It is just an invitation for more conversation. You can overcome it. And oftentimes the candor and feedback from an objection is just the foundation for a fruitful, candid partnership. This is Liz Day Simpson. If you're looking for more strategies to land five and six figure corporate clients, make sure you go to thebigmoneymovement.com and sign up for our advanced masterclass or for more sales language, you can download our sales scripts at corporateclientscripts.com. I want to hear from you. What are your best practices for overcoming objections? And do you have a story of when you might have received an objection during the sales process that actually just opened up more conversation to be a better partner for that, for that client? I want to hear from you. And I want to direct you to another video, which is what is the most important part of the sales process? Here's that video. Here you go. Click it, click it, click it.